Our family tree of life has been broken with the loss of my granddaughter, Alyssa Aladef, in the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooting, February 14, 2018. Living after the death of a child is beyond tears. It is a daily battle to survive the hardships rendered from her tragic death. The first time I walked back into Alyssa's home, I thought to myself, the photos on the walls will never change because she ceased to exist. There will never be another family birthday celebration for her. While sitting at their kitchen table, I can still visualize Alyssa bouncing down the steps and saying, what's there to eat? I'm hungry. I'd immediately jump into action to prepare whatever she wanted. She usually likes spaghetti. <laughs> Reviving, reliving those memories bring me back pain. Alyssa's death shattered the hearts of the entire family and friends near and far. Alyssa was loved for the 14-year-old teenager that she was full of energy, enthusiastic with a contagious smile that brought sunshine to all who knew and met her. It causes me pain to know that forever lost are the proms, the parties, going to college, a career, never to marry, never to have children, never to share with me more memories of her life. Alyssa's absence for holiday celebrations only leaves a memory in the seat she only always sat in. The sunshine of our family has dimmed and my imagination is just thinking of Alyssa as a bright star on a clear night. Alyssa was my daughter's only daughter. Alyssa was special and unique. Her two brothers, Robbie and Kobe, have experienced the loss of their only sister, who they looked up to, especially as a role model in the sport of soccer. Alyssa followed in her mother's footsteps, playing soccer at beginning at the age of three years old. She held the position as attacking midfielder, wearing the number eight proudly. She was captain of her soccer team, taking additional responsibilities, shouting out plays to her teammates. In the soccer game the night before her death, she was seen on the field jumping over an opponent twice her size. She's as short as I am. <laughs> and she headed the ball to move the ball towards the goal. My daughter shared with me afterwards that after that game, she told Alyssa she played the best game of her life. Alyssa's response was, I know, Mom. I believe this was a memorable gift that she left for all who saw her play that Tuesday night, February 13, 2018. Alyssa had respect for her coaches, teammates, and always gave them constructive, positive feedback on and off the field. My beautiful, talented granddaughter had an extremely bright future for possibly law school. Her brothers were always grateful that pers Melissa persuaded her parents to get extra TV channels. Outside of school, Alyssa did community service in local homeless shelters. At night, she would read New York Times best-selling books, and we would have to tell her to shut the lights off and go to bed. As a matter of fact, currently a book she wrote when she was in third grade about her love for horses I'm in the process of, process of trying to publish that for her.
Saturday before her death, she participated in a good friend's Kinsier's 15th birthday celebration. I watched a video of her dancing in formal attire, and I told her the next day how eloquent and beautiful she looked. I will always remember her smiling, excuse me, smelling like Victoria's Secret Pink Star Mist, which I know her mom sprays on herself all the time. Alyssa's death has impacted us all. Unfortunately, as a result of Alyssa's death, I myself have seen psychiatrists and weekly psychologists. I take prescri prescribed medication for depression and anxiety. I have outbursts of tears at any time. Sleepless nights and anger, which has replaced the pure joy of living each day. Each night, I too go to bed and wrap myself with an extra blanket that I would once cover Alyssa with. I do this to have a sense of feeling closeness to her in a fictitious way. Words alone cannot express the pain and anguish our family and friends have endured since the murders. I cannot even drive down the streets in Parkland without it bringing me back memories of Alyssa driving her to various places, places I used to go. The Marriott Hotel, where we, we were told she was definitely one of the victims. The high school where she was murdered are just a few examples that cause me pain every day when I drive down the streets in Parkland. The effect on others is unimaginable both in the family and with close friends. In the fall of 2018, her older brother went to a private school due to a feeling of being uncomfortable being at MSD where his sister was murdered. This became an unexpected financial cost. The laughters the hugs, the sense of security, and the opportunity to say, I love you, are forever gone. The celebration of love on the national holiday of Valentine's Day has only brought me back sorrow and memories of that tragic day on February 14, 2018, as well as when we gather at the Star of David Cemetery with prayers that Alyssa is resting in heaven. Thank you, Mrs. Rabinovitz.